what you look like matters. We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm a ballroom dance professional, a life coach, and a peak performance expert. I'm part of a group of motivated people who are dedicated to attaining emotional mastery and unlocking our full potential. We don't believe others are responsible for how we feel. In fact, we don't believe anyone can make us feel anything. We believe in the magic of ballroom dance. It has taught us how to improve our bodies, challenge our minds, and inspire our souls. And in return, I want to share those lessons with the world. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast. I'm so excited you could join me today. And as we mentioned in the uh, intro, what you wear matters. What you look like matters. Now, why is that? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. You know, as as I've mentioned, uh, I've grown up doing ballroom dance. And one of the things that is so important is the grooming and costuming uh, prior to walking out on the floor has to be perfect. There are so many things in the competitive world of ballroom dance and in many other genres as well where you don't have any control over those things. And so my coach has often taught me that the things you don't have control over, you've got to let those things go and you've got to let them go fast. But the things you do have control over, you've got to make sure you have absolute control over those situations. So if you think about it, how you look, how you dress, how your grooming is really matters. And so one of the things that uh, that I've always taught my, uh, my students that I coach and uh, train for competitive ballroom dancing is that when you walk out onto the floor, you want to make sure your costumes fit in. You want to make sure that you're doing your hair the same way that uh, that the field is doing their hair and makeup and costuming and everything else that's going on on the floor. Now, this is a tricky uh, subject because everybody wants to be unique. And in a situation where we're competing against each other, especially on the ballroom competitive floor, everybody wants to be unique and, and look different. So the metaphor that I often use is if you're a Mongol walking into Rome, they shoot you first and ask why you're there later. And this is kind of the same concept. When you walk out onto the floor to compete in ballroom dance, first you have to look like you fit in. You must fit in with the Romans first. And then you have to find the ways to stand out. Any ways that you can, that you can stand out. But it has to be standing out in a positive way, in a very positive manner. So that means that you have a costume, but the costume has to look like it fits in with the other costumes on the floor. If you do something completely ridiculous and out in left field, oftentimes you're ridiculed. Or, as we said earlier, they'll shoot you first and ask why you were there later. This is a really big deal. There's so many times that I've watched uh, young people walk out onto the floor. Their costumes are not quite uh, prepared properly. Their, their shirt isn't tucked in the right way. Their hair is not quite done right. Or maybe their makeup isn't quite appropriate for how the rest of the field is looking. And this is a big deal. Now, how does this apply to life? Well, it applies massively. You see, if you're going to get a job as an accountant, you probably should dress like an accountant. Because if you dress like a rapper and you go to apply for an accountant job, you're going to have a rough time because, just like the story said, the Romans will shoot you first and ask why you were there later. This is a really big deal. Now, in, in uh, the flip side... You look at it and you go, okay, if you're going to be a successful rapper in the rap industry, you probably shouldn't wear a suit and tie to start hitting your gigs and, and showing people what you have uh, as skills. So you've got to think about the appropriate uh, grooming for the appropriate thing that you're trying to attain. So you look ahead and you look at the goals that you have and you look at what you're trying to attain and you have to look the part. Now, you must find ways to set yourself apart. But first, but first, you have to fit in with the Romans. You have to fit in first before you can stand out. If you stand out first, oftentimes people won't see past the book cover to know and find out what's inside the book. 
And so we use our grooming to take care of that. If you go to a fancy business meeting and you come in jeans, well, depends on the people you're meeting with. But if none of them are wearing jeans and they're all wearing suits and ties, you probably ought to be in a suit and tie or they're not going to take you seriously. They're not going to appreciate maybe the message that is wonderful that you have that you want to deliver. This is a really, really big deal and it's super easy. It's a really easy concept to understand and for some of us, maybe a little bit more difficult to execute. You might say to me, well, I don't have a suit, but I want to try out for this business position that requires me to have a suit. Well, you better find a way. You must find a way to get a suit. Maybe find one of your friends, one of your buddies that that uh, has a suit or has a similar structure to you. See if you can borrow the suit for the interview. Maybe it's one of your girlfriends and, and go through their closet and say, hey, can I borrow this to wear this because it's most appropriate for what I'm trying to accomplish. But you must dress for success. This is a huge thing. Within the studio, I, I own a ballroom studio as well, and within the studio I can see little waves of trends, of things that are trendy for the, for the college kids and the high school kids uh, and even the pros to wear for when they're taking lessons, for when they're practicing. And this is a huge deal. You always know the serious kids. You always know who's the most serious about their dancing. You always know who's really here to improve and take their dancing seriously because they dress for the occasion. They always look nice when they're practicing. Now, why would that matter? You'd think, gosh, they could wear anything while they practiced, right? You're working out, you're moving your body, you're trying to, to improve your physical skills and your mental skills. Why not just wear whatever? Just wear sweats, just wear a t-shirt. Well. There's a huge difference. When you look in the mirror, when you step up to practice and you see what you are presenting, if it looks sloppy, you tend to practice sloppy. If it looks put together and well prepped, you tend to dance and practice well put together and well prepped. You see, when you walk out the, of the door in the morning, if you're going to an interview where you must fit in with the executives, then you better look like an executive. And if you know when you look in the mirror that you don't look like the executive, you might actually self-sabotage the direction that you're going. You see, you have to feel good. And this is very clearly stated and comes across very easily when we uh, watch our young ladies uh, mature through the ranks of the ballroom uh, world. And as they mature, you can tell the days that they feel like they don't look good, their dancing isn't as good. It's amazing. You know, the image, the self-image that you have will affect you physically. It'll affect you mentally. When you get up in the morning and you prepare and you get your hair done nicely and for the for the ladies you do your makeup nicely so that you feel good so that you feel good about you this is huge this is a major difference in your day so you got to start your day off right you've got to prepare well you've got to dress for success and i know you've heard that so many times but i can tell you right now off of the idea of prepping ballroom students for getting ready to dance and compete, this is a major, major element of their preparation. I oftentimes find myself talking to the parents of brand new students that are about to compete and we discuss what the preparation is. And one of the things I try to get across, of course, is that same thing we talked about earlier. You have to prepare ahead of time and take control of the things you can control. But the things that are out of your control, you leave those alone. For these kids competing in ballroom, they can't control the marks by the judges. They can't control the politics. They can't control whether they're going to be in the first uh, heat or in the last heat in the lineup. They can't control any of those things. But the one thing they can control absolutely is their grooming. How they look. How they look matters. Remember the story. It's an easy story. When you walk into Rome, if you look like a Mongol... They're going to shoot you first and ask why you were there second. So, real easy message today. I just wanted to point it out. And in all aspects of our life, I just want you to really step up and take a look at your wardrobe. 
You can wear different things for different times. If you're going to the gym, dress for success. Look like you're going to the gym. Look like you mean to improve your body. If you're going to a business meeting, look at who is going to be at that business meeting and get a feel for how they dress and make sure you match that. And then stand out in your own unique way on top of that. If you're doing ballroom, if you're one of my ballroom students, make sure you dress for practice. Look the way that you want to practice. If you want to practice precise, then you better dress precise. If you want to practice emotionally, then dress emotionally. You've got to start to pay attention to your grooming because you have control of it. You can make a difference with how you look. So it doesn't matter if you're going to be a rapper, like I said earlier, dress like a rapper, look like a rapper. Otherwise, nobody will accept you and then find a way to stand out. So I hope this helps a little bit. Go and try to take a look at your wardrobe. Take a look at how you dress for when you practice, when you compete, for when you go to your business meetings, for when you're dealing with uh, the colleagues that you're trying to impress or a new client that you're trying to get on board for a new uh, idea that you have. Make sure that you take care of your grooming from head to toe, from your hair to your makeup to your shoes. Make sure you look the part and that people will believe you first and then find out why, you, why you're unique second. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for joining me today on this podcast. I am so appreciative for all of you. Uh, make sure you go like and share the podcast with other people you think might benefit from it. It really helps us know to keep doing these podcasts. They're free for everybody, so share it with somebody so that uh, they can uh, get the benefit of all this great information. We are so appreciative for you guys out there, and uh, make sure you go like it on iTunes and share share it away. So thank you so much for coming today, and we'll see you at the next podcast. Thanks. Are you loving Magic for Life? Please like and share our podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Want more magic for your life? Join me for some great Facebook Lives on the official Facebook page at Michael A. Johnson Official.